the show is brilliant, as you remember, but this, um, we had several problems. One was that Glenn, as a writer, as good as he is, is, is a last minute deadline kind of writer. It can't get it up until we're on the way. And um, that caused a lot of problems, not the least of which was um, we're supposed to be shooting at an airport today, and Glenn, on the way in, had this fabulous idea about something or other in a nightclub. Well, everybody's off shooting at the airport, and we got to pick everybody and move them into a nightclub. So that the costs were horrendous as a result of that. Um, now, the scene... In all fairness, the scene in the nightclub was much better than the airport scene. I'm not saying he, he wrote brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. The other problem, but I'll, I'll give you a story connected that way. I'm in my office one day, it's Tuesday night, we're on that night with Moonlighting, we're doing an original, and I get a phone call from Glenn about 3.30, and he says in his very quiet way, Brandon's Glenn, and I wonder if I could come over and see you for a few minutes. And I said, yeah, Glenn, I, I, I'm a little busy, but maybe tomorrow. He said, no, 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 I, I, night now would be good. And I said, okay, Glenn, come on. He comes over and he sits down. I said, Glenn, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? He said, well, we just finished tonight's show and we're eight minutes short. I said, what? He said, well, we're eight, we're eight minutes short. And I said, Glenn, we're going on in four hours. We're on the air. And you're eight minutes short? And I said, I can't run... Smokey the Bear for miniseries in there, you know, I mean, I, there's no public announcements that I can run and run for eight minutes. How come? Well, when we edited it, it was a little too tight and we had to chop it. And I, and I said, I don't, I'm call, madly calling the administrative guy saying, what are we going to do? We got eight minute poll on Tuesday night in an hour. What am I going to do? And they're going, we don't know what to do. We, we want to call the news department. Maybe we'll put a news special in. We don't and we're on the air literally in four hours. And in the East Coast, and, and I, I said, Glenn, you know, get out of here. So he gets out and he calls me from his car phone and he says, I was just thinking about on this problem on the way. What if we do this? What if we do a little scene in front of a curtain and she's there and he's there and he says this and she says that and we go live in the East Coast and then we'll do a go tape repeat for the West Coast. And, and I'm going, great. Great, do it. <laughs> Great, do it, do it, Glenn. And we go on that night live in the East Coast, and I see the thing, and it's Maddie and I can't remember his character, and they're doing a little repertoire thing, and it is fabulous. It is as if he had thought of this two years ago. It is brilliant. It is connected to what's just happened. The fact they're sitting in front of the yeah, in front of a screen excuse me, a, a curtain all works and within the context of what they're talking about, it's brilliant. So that was Happy Days with Glenn. And, um, uh, and then you wonder why I stopped hearing. <laughs> and it was difficult. We also had another difficulty, which was our two stars didn't talk to each other. The most perfect example in the history of television of chemistry between two people uh, on television, a show that's all about the chemistry between those two people, their relationship and how they interplay with each other, with two actors who always did it separately, never with each other. Should we go shoot Sybil? We go to. Finally, in that scene, we come to, and we find they, they're going to come together and they're going to make love. And they come and they make love, she makes love, and he makes love. <laughs> and we edit together. The entire last year, I don't think they were in one scene together. Was that from the beginning? No. It, it, it happened once it he started It grew in rancor to, over, yeah. the, over the uh, course of the event. And then we got, and we got to so much drama uh, towards the end, and Sybil said, I will not come back if Glenn Barron's going to come back. And you know, it, it was, we just had walkouts. It was endless, endless drama. It's what happens when a show, A, becomes a hit, and B, it involves too few people at its nucleus. This often happens in single lead shows where the single lead on the star and he takes over the writing, he takes over the producing, he takes over everything and the show gets canceled. Um, this, that's what happened in Moonlight. It was just the circle of the talent, dependent talent was only three people. And if one of those three had a problem, the whole thing kind of fell apart, which is what it did. But while it was on the air, it was wonderful.